welcome everyone back to the Nexus Fuel Product Studios for the GolfDirector.com. And this is the quote-unquote roundtable slash coverage of the majors being brought to you by Wild Wing Cafe at Barefoot Landing. I want to thank the good folks at Wild Wing Cafe for picking up the sponsorship for our coverage of the majors. And also, too, we'll be going there live Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of the entire Masters to be broadcasting live from Wild Wing Cafe. We are very much looking forward to that. Hugh Roy III, George Honeycutt, and today's special guest, Mr. Jimmy Biggs from Crow Creek. Gentlemen, we've been talking about Augusta, and we mentioned briefly about the Craft Nabisco. I wanted to kind of give you an overview for our listeners. The qualifications for invitation for the uh, Masters, of course, everybody looks for that envelope coming in the mail. Everybody wants to see that piece of linen uh, when they pull it out of that envelope. It's just, I mean, can you imagine anything? Hugh and I, last week, we talked about those kids now that got their invitation mm -hmm. to participate in the drive, chip, and putt yep. uh, that's going on. Actually, will be broadcasted this Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on the Golf Channel. And so just imagine their eyes when they open that up. I mean, I, I just can't imagine it. I got invited to Fulton County Stadium one time to, to participate in the punt, pass, and kick contest. And I thought my world was end. I mean, I was going to go out on the field where the big boys played. Mm -hmm. Imagine going he to He got out of Coweta County one time. <laughs> No, back then I was in Gwinnett County. Oh, where you I was Gwinnett? out in Snailville. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Snailville. Uh, qualification for invitation. Interestingly, of course, a master tournament champion, you are lifetime exempt. You get an invitation every year as long as you want to play for the rest of your life. And we've seen several past champions just reach ages that they just felt like they could not participate on a competitive level. And didn't they put a limit on that, though, 65 or something like well, that? Well, they did. They did. But it was a very quiet, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, as far as a, a quote-unquote rule. Yeah. But uh, I think, realistically, they still leave it up to. Otherwise, Gary Player wouldn't still be teeing it up and, and playing like he did last year. But I think last year was his final year. Yeah. So, uh, again, you've got the honorary starters, Jack, Arnie and now Gary uh, so I think that's just all a, a marvelous thing but again the qualifications master champion you're invited back for the rest of your life Adam Scott now has that green jacket he's invited back Bubba Watson uh, again you know we'll see, we'll see how Bubba does <laughs> uh, uh, you know and and this year who knows maybe it's just somebody from out of the blue that becomes a master champion and Hell Cabrera you would have just never pictured and Hell Cabrera having a master's jacket. So, uh, and I think that all leads back to the way this whole tournament has been set up. The invitations again, a US Open champions are honorary, non-competing after five years. So they get a five-year exemption. British Open champions get five-year exemptions. PGA champions get five-year exemptions. Uh, one thing that our listeners may not know and viewers of the program, the players championship. If you win the Players' Championship, you get a three-year exemption to Augusta. So that, that's a lot. That means a lot. Yeah, I mean, I mm -hmm. remember when the Players' Championship gave the winner a 10-year exemption on tour. Uh -huh. And they've since changed that. Mm -hmm. What is it now, Five. do you know? Five-year? Mm -hmm. But, and again, that's, their own, that's the PGA Tour's yeah. own private stop. Exactly. That's, that's their it, baby. their event. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, uh, but for the Masters to recognize that player's champion and give a three-year exemption, that's pretty neat. That's good stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and I didn't know that until you start checking the research and all. So, I thought <clears throat> that'd be a pretty neat trivia uh, question per se. Winners of the player champion, again, get three years. Of course, the current U.S. amateur champion uh, is honorary competing for one year. And then, of course, the runner-up to the U.S. amateur is so the first and second place finishers in the USM as long as they remain exemption, an amateur as long as they remain an amateur and then of course they are also staying at the crow's nest oh yeah so uh, that's an honor in itself just being Absolutely. able to check Which into the, studio the crow's is, nest the studio is bigger than the crow's nest <laughs> <laughs> it is it's it's a pretty tiny place it's a tiny but place it's, it's, it's pretty cool yeah. it's the neatest thing you'll ever walk oh, into yeah. Yeah, there's oh, yeah. no doubt about it. And of course, just the British Open, the current amateur British amateur champion, again gets an exemption and they're allowed to play. The current Asian Pacific amateur champion, which of course last year we saw the unique 16-year-old that popped over and played, mm -hmm. uh, and you saw the nerves get to him real quick, uh, especially in the first two rounds of, of regulation play. And then the current U.S. amateur Pub Links championship, which is now 
defunct. Defunct. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, that will go back to a quote-unquote um, type of amateur open championship and so it's it's interesting how that I would imagine up. they would take that to the US Open as far as the amateurs finishing in the open. I would mm -hmm. say so. Uh, mm -hmm. That's where I would see yeah, that. Yeah, low going. am. Yeah. Low right. am for low the open. Low am, low two am, something like that. Give yeah. them a couple. But I mean, you never know. I mean, like I said, Augusta's Augusta and they can do what they want. It's their golf tournament. And they will do what they want. Yes. Mm -hmm. So moving on, again, right now there are 96 players in the field as listed on the invitee list provided by the Masters. And so, Ray, really, there's only one more slot left available this week out at the Shell Houston Open. And that literally could not be filled if somebody that's already in wins. That's, mm -hmm. that's right. So, mm -hmm. you so know, you've got Gallagher, Stephen Gallagher, who just got in as the last top 50 in the world. He's the last spot from that. So the only spot left is someone winning this week that's not already into the Masters. Agreed. Agreed. So, uh, again, let's jump over real quick. Let's talk about the other major that's r really in our, our scope right now, our, our focus, and that is the Kraft Nabisco being played out at Mission Hills Country Club, the Dinah Shore Tournament course. And, and this is, of course, with the history of Dinah Shore and her, her support of the LPGA. Oh, absolutely. Uh, which, you know, she was one of those individuals that without her, much like Arnie, much like Jack, much like Gary, she was one of those celebrities that stood behind this quote-unquote product and tried to just push it along, push it along, push it along. The LPGA would not be where they are today without the Dinah Shore. No, and Dinah Shore, basically, you look at it, not to interrupt, Jimmy, but, mm -hmm. I mean, she was the Bing Crosby of the LPGA. Agreed. I will you know? buy, buy that for sure. Yeah. Actually, that's where I grew up. Uh, grew up, Rancho Mirage, just yes. across the street from Mission Hills. That's where, Did you really? That's where I learned to play. The Dinah Shore course, Mission Hills. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I've, now, been, I've been through several earthquakes out there. It's yeah, I have too. <laughs> actually, the last one I was in was '94. So uh, yeah, that, that's, that's actually when finals, I moved to New York. I was at the finals of tour school that year. So <laughs> imagine doing that with the finals yeah. of tour school going on. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a whole other. We'll have to get into that. That's yeah. a whole other show. That and the, and the and when the Santa Anas come through there mm -hmm. and the dust, they can water that place for three weeks and that, that dirt's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Being being out there, Jimmy, and growing up in that area and all that, uh, talk a little bit about Mission Hills and, and that whole golfing environment. Our, so much our, our listeners and our viewers of the network, they don't understand the the elevation change, the density of air, the, you know, the, the way the ball flies versus in other areas of the country or the world. And so give us a little snapshot of what golf is like out there. I'll tell you the breakdown of it, George. You don't realize how beautiful it is once you get out there on the course, but they, they do have ryegrass down there, and it is absolutely beautifully overseeded. The greens out there are faster than they look on TV. And I can understand why they jump in the lake at the end of the tournament because you are literally exhausted after playing that, that golf tournament four days in a row. Those might be the fastest greens in the United Absolutely. States of America. No a that is faster I mean, than faster this table. Faster than Augusta, no joke. Absolutely. They're, they're ridiculous. Uh, no humidity, so thusly very dry air. Mm -hmm. And the temperature, there's a big fluctuation. I've been out there when, you know, it'd be 100 and then literally as the sun starts going down and literally within 15 minutes after going dark, it'll drop 30, 40 degrees. Easily. So, uh, Easily. again, a big temperature variance and all that. But, again, the Kraft Nabisco being played this week. They're actually starting play this morning. And uh, it's a $2 million purse. This event actually began in 1972, and it became a major for the LPGA in 1983. So it is a four-day, uh, four-round event for the ladies. Last year's winner, 2013 champion, was NB Park. And uh, so NB will look to continue and, and defend her championship. She finished last year at 15 under par. That's pretty good playing. That's pretty strong. At, at this champion uh, layout golf course mm -hmm. she shot rounds of 70 67 67 69 so that's pretty solid play gentlemen uh real quick who do you see as far as maybe the front runners for picking up uh the, this first major of 2014 uh I, i'm gonna go ahead and throw lexi out there george uh, i just think she has the if she can put that t-ball in play I think she's she's starting to putt pretty well now. Uh, I, I definitely can't lay out MB because she I think she's the best putter on that tour. But uh, I'm thinking Lexi, uh, she can put that tee ball in play. She can overpower that golf course. Yep. I personally, my my pick is going to be Stacy Lewis, but my in my heart, I'm still pulling for IKQ. 
Well, interestingly, IK is right now leading the tour in driving accuracy at 88.4%. So she is number one in driving accuracy on if the LPGA tour. I get her to make a six-inch putt, we'll be in good shape. <laughs> I think I'm. I think I'm the opposite. I think I'm 14 percent in fairways hit. So that's. Uh, I got. I got some room to grow. There. Well, you got. Well, you got the the other side of yep. the coin there covered. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly, of course, uh, their leader of the uh, CME Globe points is Kerry Webb, who's having a phenomenal year. Uh, Kerry Webb also is is leader of official money, and uh, in second place is Anna Norquist. Paula Creamer is in third, who is likewise having a very good year, mm -hmm. 2014 so far. Stacy. Lewis is in fourth, and uh, Miss Munoz, who I think is one of the best looking uh, uh, pair of shorts out there, is uh, in, in fifth. Here so, we go. well, oh, guys, I, come on, I got to go there. It's only a matter of time. Uh, scoring average for the year leader uh, again in B Park. So, you, you, you can't discount her at this event. Yeah, I don't think you can discount her any event. Yeah, it's just she she's going to go out. She's not going to shoot something just totally crazy, but yet she's going to be under par every day. Mm -hmm. And so thusly, I think that that may end up taking the overall championship again. I think she will defend MB Park is my choice. So uh, we'll go with that. We'll go ahead and plug that down. So, again, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch this weekend. I strongly encourage all of our listeners and all of our viewers to, to watch this tournament. I mean, it's fun to watch the ladies. Hugh talks about it every week in the fact that if you, if, as an amateur player in the game of golf, if you want to look at great course management, look at club selection, look at the way the, the clubs are, are played, uh, had the variety of shots made with the different clubs, watch the ladies. Don't watch the guys. Watch the ladies because then that's going to be more relate back to your distances, your, your approaches. It's more realistic. Yeah, Absolutely. It, it it's is. more realistic. More, stuff, more, more clubs hit that you would normally hit. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. Right. Especially me. Well, especially me. I mean, but again, it's just so many people just kind of discount the LPGA. I actually, and I made this comment the other day, Jimmy, last week there were four events on television, the Eurasia Cup. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There was all these events on television. However, the women's event at Aviera was the best. It was, without a doubt, the most intriguing. It was exciting coming down the stretch. And we saw Anna Norquist shoot a 67 on a very difficult golf course and come out of nowhere where to win this doggone yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was much better than the, the PGA Tour. <laughs> yeah. And, and I mean, in this tournament here, George, it's very similar to Augusta. It's a matter of who chokes the worst coming down the stretch. I mean, because well, you see a lot of major it. jitters, you know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, especially for one IK Kim with I a. Uh, My girl's uh, coming yeah. back, though. Just relax. Yeah. She'll be back. But she played solid. And, you know, she strikes the putt. It, it goes around the cup, comes back and looks at her. And, you know just devastation mm -hmm. absolutely and you have to have the absolute worst feeling in your heart and your soul for someone like that oh yeah but she played well to be there and so thusly i think she could also repeat that so girl can hopefully she has those same mindsets mind thoughts she's pretty tough i'll give yeah. her that for you know she she's kind of got that mindset of you know i got to get out there and get it done but you talk about a ball striker now i'm telling you well Hugh, you'll probably agree it's it's good that she had this at the beginning of her career sure so she she's probably learned from that and i guarantee you she'll be stronger than ever yeah good point good point all right, let's jump back to a Masters, and let's go ahead and lay out our predictions for Augusta. Jimmy, I'll let you start first. Uh, well, I'm going to take a player who's played very well in every tournament he's entered this year. I'm going to take DJ. I'm going to say Dustin. Uh, Dustin Johnson. I, I'm going to say he's got the, if he can keep that driver, there's no one who hits it further without, with the exception of maybe Rory. Um, if they can put it in the fairway, I think he's, uh, he's going he's gonna to light it up. I think Dustin's going to be wearing the green jacket. Okay. You? I somehow I just knew that was coming out of your mouth, Jimmy. I just, <laughs> oh, you didn't I know really, that. You didn't you know, know that. I that just, took me by surprise. I, and hell, he, I, I, if I remember right, he told me yesterday. <laughs> I did. I did tell you yesterday. I told you exactly what I said. <laughs> George, I, you know, I, he hasn't played <clears throat> worth a flip so far this year, but he was my pick at the beginning of the year, and we talked about this, and I'm going, and I think it's going to happen. I like Ian Poulter. Wow. Wow, okay. Wow. I just think Poulter is one of those that if he gets going in this golf tournament and he gets everything hopping, it's Katie bar the door because there is no muzzle on this guy when he gets going. Wow. That's, that's bold right there, buddy. I agree with DJ. That's bold. 
It's not match play. You do realize that. I'm not worried <laughs> yeah. about that. Yeah, he's, not, realize, he's, not not he's not playing the U.S. He's not playing the U.S. It's not Ryder Cup. It's not match play. I'm mm-hmm. just, I'm just, I said this to you earlier in the year and we talked about it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'm sticking to my guns. All right. Well, you think I'm going one way with my pick and I'm not going that way. You're, you're waiting for me to say Sergio. I know you're not going Sergio. Yeah. I'm going Rory. You are going Rory. I'm going Rory McIlroy. Okay. I think Rory, I think this is his year. I think this, he's going to pick up this, the Masters, and then he'll pick up the British. Well, let's call Mr. Payne and make sure they're not serving shrimp over in the butler cabin when oh, he boy. goes off number 10. Oh, come on. Come on. Did you have to go there? Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> it was one of the ugliest tee shots I've seen in the history of the flipping Masters. Well, maybe so. Maybe so. But, again, he's got that experience. Yeah. So, And like Jimmy said about Ink Young, hopefully he's learned from it. Dark horse, long shot, real quick. Oh, dark horse. Um, wow. I didn't give you any prep time you for this. You did not one. give me any prep I time for that. I apologize for that. Um, dark horse, I'm not sure it's really a dark horse. Bubba Watson, assuming his uh, allergies don't flare up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> He can take a suppository one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, go ahead. Mm, Justin Rose. Ooh, now, now see, I like that. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, that's got a chance mm-hmm. there. That's got a chance. My dark horse, Jason Day. Jason Day. He's, I, he's certainly been a factor the last couple of years. He's always there on Sunday. Yep. He's solid, good ball striker, and if the putter gets hot, if he can handle the nerves that last four or five holes, Jason Day could win it. So Not a bad pick. Mm-mm. Guy's got the best golf swing on tour. He's just got the worst tempo and pace of anybody out there. Well, not the worst, it's but pretty it's darn close. close. Swings his tempo. Well, that's true. Which is that's true. But seven times again, faster it's a than dark Nick Price. Horse. Seven times faster than Nick Price? Yeah, yeah. It's really? up there, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, it's one, two, one, two, one, two. I'll take your At least word Nick's was the same every time. Yeah, you two guys are professionals. Okay. All right, so we're looking at uh, Big C uh, chose Dustin Johnson. Chused. Chused. Mm -hmm. That's my own word. Hugh chose um, Ian Poulter, and I got Rory. Mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead and mark that down, note it, and uh, we'll see how everything turns out, of course, Sunday evening. Yeah, we will. So looking forward to it. Jimmy Biggs, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, George. This has been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. uh, we'll look forward to you showing up at Wild Wing Cafe and joining us on the air there. I plan on collecting my winnings and wings. Oh, good deal. Mm-hmm. I want to remind everyone, we're going to be giving away all kind of prizes and, and little trinkets and everything while we're at Wild Wing Cafe. So be sure to come out. If you're in the area, if you're playing, I don't care if you're over in Atlanta or at Augusta or whatever, pop down here. Of course, we do have Monday after the Masters coming up. Uh, we do. We're going to try to get a couple of good friends that are playing in that, that uh, if they come in early, uh, especially a couple of the former baseball players and celebrities, their friends, get them to come over and hang out and do the show with us. So and we should I, have a lot of fun. Over those four days, Hugh, we just not, never know who's going to walk in and pop no on clue. there. We Absolutely. have no clue. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I look forward to it. I really do. As long as we can get Bieber Jr. over here, over there, we're in good shape. Bieber Jr.? Yeah. Wow. He went there, Bubba. <laughs> For Jimmy Biggs, Hugh Roy the Third. I'm George Honeycutt. And, of course, thanks so much for joining us on thegolfdirector.com. You've been listening to the coverage of the majors brought to you by Wild Wing Cafe. Coming live to you out of the Lex- Nexus Fuel, Nexus Fuel Products Studio. I'll get that right. Of course, you can see all TGD programming is now available on demand at TGD TV. And get your golf news at thegolfdirector.com. Thanks for joining us. Sir.